Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this intermediate accounting lesson, I wanted you to know that you can actually download the notes for this section and specifically this lesson that you're about to watch if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or you can head over to the description link that's below and I'll put that link to those notes below where you can find them, download them, and print them, and follow along as you watch this lesson. So go do that, and here is your intermediate accounting lesson. All right, in this lesson, we're gonna go over the conceptual framework for accounting. This is kind of a top-level understanding. We're going to dig through some of these concepts here in the next few lessons, but we want to give you a big picture of what the conceptual framework is before we dive in deep with some of these elements that make up the conceptual framework. So the basics here of the conceptual framework is that the conceptual framework provides the underlying foundation for U.S. accounting standards. The uh, conceptual framework provides structure and direction to financial reporting, but doesn't necessarily try to prescribe what U.S. GAAP is. So the way that I like to think about conceptual framework is the conceptual framework is like, what are our ideals when it comes to uh, financial statements and financial reporting? It provides a guide to accounting standards, but they are not necessarily accounting standards, meaning they're not the rules themselves. So for instance, you know, if we talk about the U.S. Constitution, you would, some would say the U.S. Constitution in some respects is the framework for all the laws and the rules that we've had to put in place in our communities at the state level at the federal level so that constitution dictates how we create rules and laws in which we live in same thing here the conceptual framework dictates not necessarily what the rules are, but how we come about our rules. What are ideals that, that help set the rules that we're going to be uh, establishing for financial reporting? Uh, so we're looking for structure and we're looking for direction and that's what the conceptual framework does. And then from there, we elevate that to the different standards that we want to pass in order to appropriately um, appropriately prepare our financial statements for external users. Now, at the end of the day, the conceptual framework is a set of interrelated objectives and fundamentals that help standard setters produce consistent and appropriate standards for accounting. The remember that the framework does not prescribe what gap is. It's more like a guidelines of what we should be thinking about as we um, prepare gap rules, okay? Now, what are these interrelated objectives and fundamentals that basically um, create this conceptual framework? Well, let's take a look at these different objectives and fundamentals. You know, the first thing that we kind of start with or kind of the backup here, the way that we disseminate that conceptual framework is through this um, the statement of financial accounting concept. So you can almost call, you can almost think of these are as memos. These are the memos that are sent out that kind of establishes the conceptual framework. The first thing is the objective. So uh, one of the objectives or the objective of financial reporting is to provide financial statement information that is useful to capital providers. So again, we talked about this at the very beginning of this section, our job is to provide useful information to external users so that they can make appropriate decisions when it comes to investing in our company. When we're doing that, that becomes our overarching objective of what financial reporting is all about. And that can be found with SFAC8 or Statements of Financial Accounting Concepts 8. Now, in addition to that, we've got some elements that we have to think about. We have to think about the categories of the financial statement. So we prescribe categories like assets, liabilities, equity, um, expenses, revenue, and dividends. That comes from us from SFAC6. And then we have some characteristics that we want the financial statement to um, to be prepared with. And so some fundamental characteristics that we want to think about when it comes to financial reporting is that they are relevant in nature and they have 
a faithful representation of what actually happened with the company during a given period of time. We'll talk more about that in another lesson. We also have something called enhancing characteristics. So we've got a base fundamental characteristics, and then we have other characteristics that we like to layer right on top to enhance the data, to enhance the information that we're providing to external users. Now, we also want to be mindful of constraints. One of the biggest constraints is cost effectiveness. We can also throw in here materiality, which we'll talk about later on. But we want to make sure that as we're trying to do this, that we're not hindering our ability to complete it by draining all the money it takes to be able to prepare it. So there is this cost versus a benefit. What's the benefit of reporting this item based on what's the cost to obtain that information. If it costs us too much to the point where it actually doesn't offset the savings we would get from releasing that information, then maybe we need to think about not putting it on our financial statement. So we don't want to put everything, but we want to put the most effective information in the financial statements that have a uh, direct impact on decision making for an external user. Now over here on the right hand side, I've got recognition, measurement, and disclosure concepts. This talks about assumptions and principles that we need to think about when we creating financial statement. That's in SFAC 5 and 7. And then once we think about all of that and doing all of that, it becomes a financial statement. It becomes putting together the financial statement based on all of the elements that we need to ensure that the financial statements fairly uh, reports the financial um, the fi financial health of the organization in an ever uh, in a given period of time. So we want to think about that, and we're going to look at some of these here over the next few lessons. So this is the conceptual framework. Remember, it doesn't establish gap, but it kind of gives us our you know what we believe in as we are preparing the rules for GAP. If we don't know what we're believing in, then we're just going to create rules just to create rules, but we wanna have an understanding of what we stand for in order to make sure that those rules conform to what we feel the financial statements should be. So hope you enjoyed this lesson, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you enjoy what you saw, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to write something in the comment section below, like, I don't know, what's your favorite superhero? If you are looking for the next intermediate accounting lesson, make sure you click on this button right over here. And if you want to head to my website and see all of the lessons that are available, make sure you head to my website right here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.